Hey you, yeah, you. Go into the comments section right now and type one of your favorite superhero movies. Could be anything, animated, live action, old, new. Hell, type your top 10 favorite superhero movies. Pause the video right now and do it. I'll give you like three seconds. Two, three. I bet that none of you type kick ass unless you outsmarted me and realized that was the point I was trying to make, in which case, go fuck yourself. Kick ass is often brushed aside as a foul mouthed, grotesquely violent, and frankly super fucked up parody of superhero films, which it is but it is also wonderfully directed ahead of its time and contains a shit ton of heart. I feel like I use that term a lot, oh, Spider-Man 2 has heart, Superman should have heart. But what does that expression even mean? Well, I'm no scholar, but to me, heart means a clear passion from the entire cast and crew for the characters in the story, the story being told, and the way in which the story is told. Heart in cinema, or in art, is not something one can really define. I think you just know it when you see it. And to me, Kick-Ass just oozes heart. For those of you who don't know about or haven't seen the film, here's a basic synopsis written by me for you. Kick-Ass follows everyday comic book nerd and high schooler Dave Lazuski, who one day decides to become a superhero called Kick-Ass. Eventually shit goes bonkers and he gets tangled up with the D'Amico crime family who thinks that Dave is stealing all their coke, and money, and guns and shit, when in actuality, it's another vigilante duo. The duo contains Big Daddy, an ex-cop who decides to dress up like Batman and work people like the Punisher, played fucking brilliantly by Nicolas Cage, who uses an Adam West-like Batman voice. We like you, but we don't trust you. And Hit Girl, a 12-year-old girl who's essentially a little murderous ninja with a potty mouth, eventually Frank D'Amico, the head of the crime family mentioned earlier, goes after Kick-Ass and his nerdy son Chris D'Amico goes undercover as a new superhero, Red Mist, to gain his father's respect. Kick-Ass is based on the comic book of the same name by Mark Miller and John Romita Jr. Kick-Ass did the meta thing way before Deadpool in the movies. Hey, remember that fairly low-budget superhero movie where the unexpected protagonist becomes a hero of sorts that- Okay, I'm reaching here, but the point is that Kick-Ass is a superhero movie that had a shit ton of F-bomb self-parody and a fourth wall breaking hero before it was the cool thing to do. The first act of the movie is almost a Sam Raimi Spider-Man parody. We have a likable, albeit completely dorky, protagonist who lives in Queens, has a crush on a girl way out of his league, and gets picked on and bullied by various comedic characters. What the fuck are you looking at? Dave is a very familiar character. He has the relatability of Peter Parker, but isn't Spider-Man. He doesn't have any powers or any tragic backstory. He is, as he puts it himself, I was just a regular guy. The brilliant move of Kick-Ass, to the credit of Mark Miller, is making him just a comic book nerd. He is the audience character. 80% of the movie's target audience would do exactly this if they got a wetsuit that vaguely resembled the superhero costume. That immediately invests the audience in Dave's character and creates empathy for him. Dave is what grounds the movie, no matter what absurd humor the movie throws at us, Dave's character is what suspends our disbelief. Everyone can kind of relate to him, you know, dressing up. It's not like he dresses up as a superhero and then suddenly he's got these powers and stuff, you know, he's, he's hasn't got any skill. It also remains one of the only films in the genre that looks completely like a comic book. From its colors to the way shots are framed to the scene transitions, Kick-Ass is a living, breathing comic book. Rather than take up your precious time watching YouTube videos by talking about cinematography, I'll just show you visually. Just look at shots like this, or this, or this, or even this. All of Matthew Vaughn's comic book based films are shot like comic books, that's why when anyone asks me who should direct X superhero movie, I immediately think of Vaughn. Vaughn is also a master of balancing tone, the movie is always funny and ridiculous, but it's also brutally sad, sometimes romantic, and other times inspiring. Big Daddy's death sequence sticks with me to this day as one of the most emotionally resonant moments in a comic book film. <laughs> Just look at how many tones are juggled in that moment. We have a little ninja brutally killing a bunch of goons to some really epic music and a first person gunfight. We have Nicolas Cage shouting out comic book titles as code to Hit Girl for what weapons and tactics to use. To we have Kick Ass jiggling like Jello, trying not to get shot or be lit on fire. We have the comedic relief of Evan Peters and Clark Duke. She looks like she's about 11 years old, but I can wait. I solemnly vow to save myself for her. And then we have a father slowly dying from being burned alive and trying to say goodbye to his daughter before he passes. I love you. And the magic of Kick-Ass is that it all works, and it could easily not. Just look at Kick-Ass 2. Henceforth I'll be known as... The Motherfucker. This is all a testament to Vaughn as a filmmaker and creative force. Without solid direction throughout the entire film, and his focus on getting the audience investment in the characters, this scene could have been hilariously awful. There's a turning point in every movie where you can tell if you're invested in the story, the characters, and the overall film. 
Of course that moment is completely subjective and will definitely vary from viewer to viewer, but for me, every film has that moment that completely hinges on the audience investment. In Spider-Man, it's this. In Batman, it's this. In Superman, it's this. If we weren't invested in those films, none of that would mean shit. Those moments would be laughably bad and empty. Kinda like this. Kill Martha! So why does any of this matter? I'm not really unveiling a new truth about something or having a hot take on something or really doing anything that's new or different. What? It matters because good films need to be noticed and appreciated. Sure, being angry or mad about something or having a hot take gets a film YouTuber like myself more views, but why don't we just take a second and appreciate quality cinema? Kick-Ass is never ranked in anyone's list of best superhero movies, but it should be. It is a visual love letter to comic books, a perfect parody of them, and a heartfelt story about a bunch of fucked up individuals who hope to do the right thing. In 2018, a new superhero movie is announced or released every single month. I'm not going to get into whether or not I believe in the oversaturation of comic book movies or the benefits of releasing fewer, or any of that really. But I am going to leave you with this. If you are sick of world-ending stories or overly serious stories about men in tights, watch or rewatch Kick-Ass. It's a remarkably well-made film that will remind you why you love the genre in the first place. It's 6 a.m. on a Sunday. I've been editing this kick-ass video for about 72 hours. The only thing that's keeping me going is staring at this poster at the bottom of my bed. Did they cast Aaron Taylor Johnson because his eyes resemble Tobey Maguire's? Why does Nicolas Cage not get the respect he deserves for this movie? Should I plug the Patreon page or my Twitter? I need support to keep making these videos. So if anyone's listening, patreon.com slash hightopfilms. Next week, we're gonna have an Ant-Man and the Wasp review up. Should I start reviewing movies? Probably not but I'm going to, because I feel like it. That doesn't mean the video essays will stop, don't worry. But what that does mean is there'll be more content. So more of me. But what am I? Who am I? I'm just gonna go back to staring at this poster. Goodbye.